Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about surfaces of revolution. So surfaces of revolution. So the formula for surfaces of revolution, I'll use a capital S, it's equal to 2 pi times the definite integral from A to B of little r of x times the square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function that you're given in the problem squared with respect to x. So this is the area. Okay, this is the area of the surface of revolution of the surface of revolution formed by revolving f, our function f, around an axis. Okay, so what is little r? So little r of x in this is the distance, you can think of it as a distance function, distance between the graph of f and the axis of revolution. So wherever you're spinning the graph and the axis of revolution. Okay, so let's look at a picture so you see what's going on. So, for example, let's say that we have the y-axis and the x-axis. So this is x and this is y. And then here we have our graph here. Okay, so say we want to spin it around the x-axis. So in this case, what the picture is going to look like, let me draw it over here. So here's our x and here's our y, okay? So what will happen is we'll have our little picture like this, okay? And we're spinning it around the x-axis. So it's kind of gonna look like this, okay? So it'll look something like this. So you'll have some, some 3D shape. And the formula will give us the area of that shape. Now, if you look at the formula, if you look at the formula here, it looks like the arc length formula, right? It looks very, very similar to the arc length formula. So the arc length formula is almost the same, except here you have this extra uh, r and this 2 pi. So it's kind of like you're taking the arc length and then you're multiplying it and giving it a radius. All right, so that's the formula for surfaces of revolution. Let's go ahead and do a simple example so you see how it works. So ex means example. And let's look at, um, let's say, f of x equals the square root of x. And we're going to work over the interval 4, 9. So that'll be our a, that'll be our b. And we're going to spin this around the x-axis. And we're going to find the area of the surface of revolution of this function when we spin it around the x-axis. So we're looking at the square root of x from 4 to 9, and we're spinning it around the x-axis. So what is, what is going on in this picture? So let me show you. So basically, here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. So y, x. So that's our function. And then here's 4, maybe, and here's 9. Okay, 4 and 9. And we're just concerned with this piece here. And so we need to find little r. Because right, in the formula, we need little r. So little r is this piece here. It's the distance between the function and the axis. So in this case, little r of x is the same function. It's just f of x. The formula, I'll write it down, is 2 pi times the definite integral from a to b, little r of x square root, 1 plus the derivative squared. So whenever you're doing these problems, you always have to find little r first. So that's why I drew the picture. So you see in this case, little r, that's a really easy example. Little r is just the same thing as your function. So 
So s is equal to 2 pi. So a here was 4 and b was 9. And then little r was the same as f, so the square root of x. Then here we have the square root of 1 plus. So now we need to figure out uh, this piece here, right, this derivative squared. So to figure out the uh, derivative, uh, let me rewrite f of x. You can write f of x as x to the 1 half. So when you take the derivative, you could use the power rule, right? You could take the 1 half and put it in the front. So you would get 1 half x. Then you subtract 1, right? 1 half minus 1, that's negative 1 half, okay? And you can rewrite this to make it look better. This is 1 over 2, and then you can bring this guy downstairs and turn it into a square root, right? Because x to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of x, right? And when you bring it down, when you bring this negative 1 half down, it becomes positive, right? It becomes positive. So this will be 1 over 2 square root of x. And then we're squaring this whole thing, right? We're squaring this whole derivative, dx. This is equal to 2 pi. Let's keep going. Might as well finish it. 4 to 9 square root of x square root. Then here we have 1 plus. Now we square this. We square the 1, we get 1. And then we square the bottom piece, we get 4, because 2 squared is 4. And when you square the square root, the square root of x squared is just x, right? It's just x, right? Because you're, you're squaring the square root, so it becomes x. All right, good stuff. Let's keep going. Now, there's a couple ways to proceed here. I think the easiest way is to just multiply the square roots. And we're allowed to do that, right? All the x's here are positive, so there's nothing funky going on. So we're allowed to combine these square roots. So basically, we're going to take this x. I'm going to do it in two steps. So square root x times 1 plus 4 over x. See that? That's the trick. That's the key step in the problem, right? Because you can just combine the square roots or just distribute the x. I didn't distribute it yet. I just combined them. Now we'll distribute the x. So this is 2 pi, definite integral from 4 to 9, right? Square root x times 1 is x, and then when you multiply x times this, the x is canceled. So I think you're just going to get uh, 1 fourth, right? 1 fourth, and then dx, dx. Everything looks uh, okay, right? So now I think we're ready to integrate. So we can make a, a u substitution here to integrate this. So we would let u be whatever's in the square root. So x plus 1 fourth. And then so du is equal to dx. Now, when we make a u sub here, we do have to change the limits of integration, right? Because these are x limits, so they're going to become u limits. So when x is equal to 4, u is equal to 4 plus 1 fourth. So 4, you can think of 4 as 16 fourths. So 16 fourths plus 1 fourth is 17 fourths. And likewise, when x is equal to uh, 9, u is 9 plus 1 fourth. So you can think of 9 as 36 fourths. So 36 fourths plus 1 fourth is 37 fourths. Hardcore. So s is equal to 2 pi. And then so when x is 4, we get 17 fourths. And then when x is 9, we get 37 fourths. And this is going to become u, right, u to the 1 half du. Okay? All right, so now we're ready to integrate. We're ready to integrate. So again, all we did was make a u sub, right? When x was 4, we figured out the value of u. When x was 9, we figured out the value of u. We replaced them, right, with what they're supposed to be. And then this whole thing here became u. So everything looks, looks beautiful. Okay, so s is equal to, right, s is equal to, so the 2 pi hangs out, so you have 2 pi, and then we have this definite integral. So now when we integrate this, we use the power rule, right, we just add 1 half. So 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves, so it's u to the 3 halves. Then we're dividing by 3 halves, but when you divide by 3 halves, you really multiply by 2 thirds, right? And this is a definite integral, so we don't need the plus c, so I'll use a bracket, and we're going from 17 fourths to 37 fourths. 2 times 2 is 4, so we get 4 pi over 3, okay? And I'm going to write it one more time. u to the 3 halves, 17 fourths, 37 fourths, okay? So all I did was multiply here. And now we plug in this one first. So it's 4 pi over 3, okay? So this will be 37 fourths to the 3 halves minus 17 fourths to the 3 halves. Yuck, right? So plug that in and subtract. 
Um, I, I'm not positive what this is, so I'm just going to pause for a moment here and work it out. I should have done this uh, beforehand. So let's see, 4 pi over 3, right, times, whoops, typed it in wrong to my calculator, so let's see. So 4 times pi over 3, right, and it's being multiplied by all of that stuff. So 37 over 4 to the 3 over 2 minus, and then 17 over 4. Make sure when you're typing in this in the calculator, um, make sure everything is in parentheses like it's written here on the screen. That way you don't mess up. Yep, so I got 81.14. So the answer here should be approximately 81.14. So that's the surface area, right? That's the surface area. That's the surface area of the, uh, the area of the surface of revolution. So I hope this video helped. That's it.